Okay, hello, cram stuffers. Super short one. I've made a bunch of long ones, but let's just be really short. When it comes to silver, did I tell you they weren't going to lose control, that the fix went out and the price wasn't going to skyrocket, and now they're rewriting all those contracts, and actually silver went down in price. It's under 20 now. They're bouncing it between 19 and 20. They're going to continue to bounce it between 19 and 20 for as long as they can get away with it. Dollar index is like at 82 or something, above 82, dropping down gold. I'm telling you, they haven't lost control. This is all part of a master plan, but they're going to lose control. They always lose control. There has never been a time. Our go Let's just put it this way. Our government is not smarter than all these other governments in history. All through history, they print fiat currency, they print too much of it, and the money goes to shit. It goes to zero. It goes to no value. Okay? This has happened time and time again. It's even happened in our country already, right? Worthless as a continental. Um, the southern money went to no good. The, I mean, we, right? The Confederates. Uh, it, it's happened more than once already in the United States, but fortunately for the bankers, the American attention, attention span is short and we don't study our history. And what is it that a Truman said? The only history you don't, wait a minute, the only thing new under the sun is the history you don't know. There you go. Uh, but silver, it's going to go sideways for a while longer. I said, after the fix went out, let's see, because I mean, there's a chance there are a lot of people hyping it up like, oh, silver's going to go. Me, what did I say? Yeah, get some if you want, but probably it's going to continue because they ain't losing control and they didn't lose control and now silver is under 20. But if you take a look at what's happening around the world with them, you know, killing the petrodollar, making deals where they don't have to use the, the fiat currency that we've created, that our, our FRNs, our Federal Reserve notes have uh, been the dominant power for the last little while, but it always changes. And when that happens, oh, you think, you think, you <laughs> Anyway, when the money's no good, then you're going to see some rioting. Then you're going to see some actual rioting, not peaceful protests. There's going to be civil unrest on a grand scale, and the government knows this. Okay, so as we head toward winter, and it's, you know, it's now the middle of August, and we're heading toward fall and winter, that's when prices generally creep up. They tend to creep up. Okay, so it would be good to buy now under 20, let it creep up, and then sell some, because I don't think they're losing control in January either. And then what happens is it tends to go back down again. I've said this over and over. I've been watching the silver market for like going, getting close to a decade and a half. Okay, it doesn't always follow the pattern because sometimes they change it up to make it look like there's like you know like it's not as rigged as it is. But the bottom line is, under twenty is a good time to buy. Now I could be wrong. It could go further south. I'm hoping it goes further south personally myself. Right? I don't care if you bought a whole bunch of twenty five, and I don't care. I bet, right? Most of my stuff is under ten. Um, I sold some at 18, if that tells you anything. Um, but I, if, down here at 19, this is a gift. And if it goes lower, it's more of a gift. And then you know what happens? It goes back up. So it's just like playing stocks, just like rolling stock. Did you guys ever used to roll stock where you buy something, right? And what the idea is to, to but see, most people are scared to do it. But uh, what you do is you sell when it gets high, and then you wait for it to come back down again. You use that same money and you increase your holdings in that stock. Well, it's the same thing with silver. It goes up to 22, 23, you sell it all, it comes back down to 19, you buy it up again. And you just, the idea is to keep increasing the amount of ounces you have. You're not selling in order to get out, you're selling in order to increase the amount of physical silver you have. Um, it's a very successful strategy, but most people are too chicken to do it. Myself included, for a long time. <laughs> right? But then I started saying, they ain't losing control of this thing. Right? They haven't got out of control. I look at the dollar index. I look at what's happening around the world. They are eventually going to have it. It's going to when it when the house that house of cards falls down, it will probably fall down rather suddenly, and the price will probably skyrocket rather rapidly. And when I say rapidly, I don't mean all in one day. I mean like within a couple of months, it'll be like, wait, silver was twenty bucks three months ago, and now it's a hundred or something like that. But it's not going to be like silver was twenty bucks today, and tomorrow it's a hundred. That's just the chances of that happening are slim and none. Okay, the chances of it going down under 18, 15, 13, very, very slim. There's a chance it could happen, but I doubt it. But what's going to happen now is you're going to see the price creep up a little bit, and then they're going to bring it back down again. That's my prediction. Okay, but it's sideways, sideways. We're not going to 50, 60, 70, 80. They still got, and even more now, they have more vested interest in keeping the prices down. It's squishing the prices. So if you're a precious metal collector, gold, silver, and so forth, and you got time, buy it. Because, and then when it gets up uh, to, a, to whatever your price point, I'm not going to tell you when to sell, because I could be wrong there too, 
But so far, I've been saying, look, it gets up a, a couple of bucks, and then you sell it, and then you just buy more. And there's a bit, and then and then the other thing they do is don't use all like, like if you have a hundred ounces, then just sell like twenty ounces just in case when it when it gets up to that price that you think maybe twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, depending on you know in the winter time, depending on and you gotta be watching the market and see what's going on in the news and so forth. And then because they're playing it like a penny stock, it's just like penny stock. It's like it's buy on the rumor, sell on the news. But the idea is that it gets to that point, you sell it. And maybe it goes 27, 28, and then it comes back down. Well, the, the name of the game is not buy bottom and sell top. The name of the game is buy low, sell high if you're going long. Now, if you know how to go short, it's impossible to go short physical, though if you actually have physical, it's hard to go short. But uh, you can go short paper, and lots of people are, and you could go short and make money on the way down. Or you could just wait for it to come back down again, buy some more, and then wait for it to go back. And you, I mean, there's been a roll, you can roll silver. I used to roll IBM. There was another company called Lycos. Lycos was very, very good to me. I made tens of thousands of dollars on Lycos back in the day. Remember that? Way back when, dot com, 90s. Anyway, you like stuff that does this in a fairly predictable manner. IBM was a good one too. But I mean, you, right? It's, if it's rolling like that, you roll with it. You sell up here, you buy down here. You sell up here, you buy down here. The trick is being able to push that sell button because I'm chicken <laughs> and most people are. But if you, uh, but again, the way you do it is you don't go sell all your everything at once. You don't go all out. You don't go all in. You roll, right? Same thing with dollar cost averaging. You buy the same amount every month, right? It doesn't matter what the price is. You just put in a hundred bucks or whatever it is, right? 50 bucks and you just collect silver. Just collect it physical, just, right? If you've got a big chunk of money, you dump some in. You dump a little bit more in. You see what happens. You dump more in. I know people that went all in at 25 because they thought 25 was the bottom. And I was like, it's going to go lower. Right? It has gotten under 20. Now, I expect that it will bounce between 19 and 20 for a while. They may take it lower. But this is generally the season. We're heading into the season where it tends to go up a bunch. And I'm not saying 50 or 60 bucks. I'm saying like 20s. Right? If it gets above that, great. But they will push it back down again. Okay, that cycle, this cycle is not done yet. They have not lost control yet. Now, again, comes December or so, time to reassess, time to look again, right? You don't just make a prediction five years ago and cross your arms and go, I told you, right? You, right? More information, find out what's going on, right? Okay, this stuff is not hard. I'm telling you, it's not hard, but people make it harder than it has to be. If you're collecting, just collect. If you want to play a little bit, get some excitement in there because you're getting bored collecting it, then, you know, you can gamble 20% or so forth. And that's what you're doing. You're gambling because when you're selling, you never know because it might take off. There's always that chance that it might go and you can't ever replace your stores, right? But when it went, when I sold at 18, I've had a chance, I had a chance to re, uh, buy back everything lower than 18, right? <laughs> and then when people were buying at 40, I was telling them, buy at 40, but it could go back down again. I'm in an under 10 for the most part, right? And this is the same thing at penny stocks. I was, I mean, there were penny stocks that I had at 20 and there were eight bucks. Don't start buying the penny stock now at eight, not that it's $8, right? It can go from eight to four. I can, it can go lose half the value and I'm still up because I was in at a quarter. This is me back way back in the day, right? But if you buy at eight, your risk is 100%, right? It's very hard. I mean, that thing started off at a quarter and you look at the chart and it's only done this, there's a chance that it's going to correct. And they all did. And people lost their asses. I know guys that, anyway, lost their asses. Went from being millionaires to being broke because they didn't understand the concept of sell and stop limits and all this kind of stuff. I lost a crap load of money also. And now, because of that experience, I have more, I'm still standing, and I can take a look at certain markets and see what the hell is going on. Now, the thing about penny stocks is that you can't move much money. You, you know, you can't move $100,000 through most penny stocks without really affecting the price and without screwing things up. But stocks like IBM, 100,000 is a drop in a bucket, right? That's silver and gold, $100,000, you can move it. It's hard, and there's guys that specialize in getting lots of ounces like that, and it turns out it's pretty hard. But the idea, guys, is you can take your money and turn it into more money, but what you really want to do now is play scared and protect your wealth. If you don't take away anything from this video, now is the time to play scared. You look at what's going on with the BRICS and Russia and China and India and all these other countries that are pissed at our government. Not us. They, a lot of them can separate the people from the government. But pissed at the United States and our bankers, right? The fucking Germans woke up before we did having protests about the central bank because they realize that it's the central bank that allows us to print all the money we want to fund our military and to do all the evil deeds that we do around the world. Okay.
they woke up. American people will eventually wake up too. But around the world, people the, the people see that our Achilles heel is the fiat, fiat currency, the FRM. The Russians see it. The, the, the Chinese see it. The Indians see it. The fucking Indonesians see it. The, go, go around, the Africans see it. So what are they going to do? They're going to set up currencies that are as good as gold. The U.S. dollar used to be as good as gold, but it's not anymore. Anyway, so very quickly, you, the dollar is under attack. And the United States press is never going to tell you that. The bankers are never going to allow. They own the press. They own the oil companies. They own the military-industrial complex. They own, right? Okay, they have no interest. And they own a lot of gold. You see what they're doing. They're buying gold and silver. They're owning precious metals. In, in other countries, the governments are, in, are, are encouraging the people to get precious metals. In the United States, you guys think I'm a nutcase. Right? And I'll, I'll show you a post I put on Reddit that people just went, gold and sil silver, that's crazy. <sighs> Two years from now, silver is going to be worth more than 20 bucks. I'll make that statement straight up. Two years from now, silver is going to be worth more than 20 bucks an ounce. Period. Uh, but right now, while it's down here, get while the getting's good. All right, that's my silver rant. And that's my silver update. I told you I'd make one in a couple of weeks. And like I said, the fix went out and they're scrambling around changing contracts and making different, but they didn't lose control of the price. In fact, it went down as I speak. We are under 20 bucks. It's probably like 1936 or something like that. I could probably look, but it doesn't matter. You understand that it was right at 12. Uh, it, gold is like under 1300 and uh, the US dollar index is 82 in scratch. And it's just... But this should go to show you they haven't lost control and they aren't going to anytime soon. But when they do, when it breaks loose, it's going to break loose. And none of us are going to be happy. doesn't matter how much silver you have. I'm telling you, things are going to be unpleasant. All right. Uh, that does it for me. Uh, 100th Monkey signing out. And uh, we'll talk to you soon. Remember, e pluribus unum, educate self, educate others.